Hey guys and welcome back, this is Coda Man. On the last episode we created two grids, two data grids, and we made it so you could select stuff on the left grid and bring it over to the right hand side and take it back. Basically the awesome and not awesome that you see here. But as part of programming and something that everyone should do is you've got to refactor your code. So there's a couple things that we can do today. But let's just start with the actual code. We'll refactor the XAML a little bit later. But we've pretty much got the exact same code repeated twice here. Now, to make this a little bit more reusable and more friendly to the next programmer that uses this, we're going to create a method that these two things can share. So we're going to create a private void, uh, a method that's going to add to the specific list that we want to add it to and remove it from the other list. So add to list. And in here, we're gonna take our I list of a person. And this will be the list to add to. And I list person, list to remove from. And person, person to add. Then we can go if person to add is null return if the list to add to dot contains person to add will return so then if the list to remove from contains person to add if it doesn't contain it what we're going to do is we're going to remove from the list list to remove from dot remove person to add and then we're going to go list to add to dot add person to add. And then we can get rid of these move to not awesome, remove from not awesome. We can delete all that code in there and simply just go this dot add to list, this dot view model dot move to not awesome. So not awesome people. And we want to remove this guy from the awesome people. And it's going to be the this dot view model that selected person. Then we can grab the same thing, copy it over here, but just basically just inversing it. And as you can see here, we've actually got less code than we did before, but it does the same thing. Well, it should do the same thing, hopefully. Let's have a quick run. And here we go. Coder man. Oh yeah. Oh, but we got one problem here. So he's still staying in the other list. So what's actually happening? Ah. We'll just do it like this. We don't even need to really check it for this. Now this should actually work the way we intended it. Oh, sweet. So we've got even less code. So we can add more checks if we wanted to, like I had before, uh, just to make sure we don't go into any edge cases and to pretty much describe to the next programmer how this function should work and what it will do if it, ex if it finds something it doesn't expect. For example, if we wanted to make sure that person to add is, n is null, isn't null, we can return, or if someone's actually consuming this library, we could throw a new uh, argument null exception. All right? So this means if we actually ran this and we didn't select anything, we hit that, we get this argument null exception and we'd see the parameter person to add. We'd know straight away that the person to add parameter is null when it shouldn't be. This is very descriptive towards the, the programmer who's actually consuming this code. They'll know straight away that person to add must be a not null value and they can check it themselves. But in our case, we don't really care for the next programmer and we're just gonna return because it's just such a simple program, this one. I'm sure there's better ways to do it, but that's just one example of how you can refactor your code to be a bit more reusable. Now, another example that was really hitting me yesterday when I recorded the last video, because I don't like to copy and paste code, but as I'm doing these videos, I'm, I'm pretty much just freeballing it. I have no plan. I'm just going and coding stuff and making it up as I go. And as I was doing this, I saw, right, I've got this exact same code here and here. 
what we should do and what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a reusable control. So we'll go add user control. And we'll call this one data grid for person with title. Add that. And here we go. That's our user control. It's blank. So we'll copy the code, paste it in. Exactly what we're seeing on the other side, except we're going to want to make this label awesome something that like a property that you can set on the parent control that we're going to use this data grid for person with title control i believe how we do that a little bit from xamarin but let's just see if it works we'll call this one grid title data grid title and we'll make the this dot content this dot content as grid dot data context equals this and then we can have that where its content is a binding to data grid title. All right, uh, we've got our data grid title and we've got an item source that we also want to bind to. So we'll have a public enumerable of person, we'll call this people. And the data grid's item source will be binding to people. And then we'll also, well, what's this? And since that's a public property, we'll just make person public for now. And we'll also have a person selected person property as well. So that's going to be reusable now. What we can do is go back to the main window. And instead of having all this code, we'll turn that into a data grid for person with title. We'll have our people bound to finding awesome people we'll have our selected person finding to selected person well, we'll see if this works ah and that's what we need the title grid title is awesome all right let's run this i have no idea if this is going to work now if this was xamarin we'd be doing this slightly differently in the data grid title for person, but let's just see if this works off the bat. I doubt it will. Yep. All right. So let's have a look at WPF bindable properties for user control. Dependency property. So that's how we do it. All right, all right, all right. Let's just copy this. So this is similar to Xamarin anyway. Well, Xamarin would use bindable properties and you have a static method called create. But this way, we just have a, what they call dependency property. So I'm not quite sure how this works. So we're just gonna figure it out as we go. So we're gonna have this as data grid title property. And it's gonna be for our data grid title. It's a string. And who defined it, I believe. This is what that's, yep. So the owner type. So the data grid for person with title is the owner type. And what's this last one over here? Type metadata. I'm sure that's important in some way. I also see how this is going off the edge. I don't like having things that long, so I'll bring it over to the next line. So do I actually need property metadata? No. Cool. So if we go back to our main window now, Data grid title seems. Hey, there you go. We got awesome coming through. That's pretty awesome. And we'll repeat the same step for the rest of the properties we've got in here. All right. Now that's all gone. Are these errors going to disappear? Hmm. Rebuild. Huh? Who knows? That could have worked. Or it might not have. Oh my God. It worked. That's all you had to do is add that dependency property for each one of these. Register it using the static method dependency property that register and you're good to go and that's an example of actually discovering how something works while coding i just assumed it would work one way it didn't work and i just did a, a quick google clicked on the first answer skimmed through it and tried it and if it didn't work i would have done the same thing and tried something else and maybe done a bit more of in-depth research but it turned out that worked but let's see if it has the same functionality no so what do you think the problem is? I'm wondering if it's because 
this selected person is actually coming through as null. It is. It definitely is. Which means I think we need to make this this uh, selected person property by default. Can we make it two way by default? What's how do we do that? Huh. Well, we can go in here and for our selected person, we can make this binding mode just two way. And we'll just see if that works straight off the bat. I don't know if it will. Nope, didn't work. And we'll go over to our main win window and try literally the same thing here. Does it work? It does work. Okay. Awesome. Normally I would want to have a way so I could default the mode to two way. I also wonder if I don't need this mode two way over here because this is just going to bind directly from the UI, from the code behind to the UI. But this one over here is going to have to propagate from the data grid from person, from the code behind to the UI into this controller as well and back and forth because it will change. It's not just one way. That's right. I could be talking absolute shit over here because I'm just discovering this as I go, just like you, but that's what I think of it anyway. And then that works. So what we're going to have to do now is just the same thing, except down here, grab that guy. And we're just going to remember that this guy was on the second column, third, well, the second index, but the third column, just double check this works which it won't because they're going to both be bound to the same thing. I forgot to chain this binding here to not all bing, bam, 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 bong. Sweet. So that's it for today's episode. What we learned today was how to turn code that we've copied and pasted into more reusable fragments of code. It's called reusability. We've also learned how to create a custom user control in WPF, as well as creating its own bindings. I'll catch you again on the next episode. You have a great one. This was Coda Man.